a tree that hugs you back. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times British TV went off the rails. We're gonna, gonna get you changed, all right? Because you can't wear that stuff in here because there's a high chance that it could be infected. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the most bizarre, misjudged, and chaotic moments in the history of British telly. What's the weirdest UK show you've ever seen? Let us know below. Number 10. Release the Hounds The concept for this series is simple to the point of stupidity, but it's also kind of hard to look away. They take a member of the public, or a very minor celebrity, and set a pack of dogs on them. Sounds barbaric? Yes, but obviously the dogs aren't actually going to do anything, as it's still not socially acceptable to let people be savaged for the sake of early evening entertainment. Keep moving! Keep moving, alien! It's all a bit pointless, really. But there are other challenges in the lead-up to the final chase, and some enjoyment to be had in watching the fear in the contestants' eyes as the gates are opened and they prepare to run the gauntlet. <laughs> Number 9. Dick and Dom in the Bungalow Saturday morning TV has always been chaotic, but Dick and Dom in the Bungalow was the first show of its kind to receive official complaints in Parliament. The programme consisted of two presenters tasked to babysit a group of hyperactive kids, known as Bungalow Heads, for a few hours every Saturday and Sunday morning. Dick and Dom weren't what you would call responsible adults, and the kids basically ran wild while the presenters organised games that made no sense. Yeah, yeah, baby, look at me. I'm gonna dance. The bungalow heads always looked like they were having the time of their lives, and it was fun for the viewer too. By the end of the episode, the bungalow was always completely trashed, covered floor to ceiling with the famous creamy muck muck. Number 8. The Alone Experiments This misjudged social experiment saw two sets of kids between the ages of 10 and 12 left unsupervised for a week with only the cameramen, who were under orders not to intervene. I'm not going to let you eat that. I'm not going to let you eat that. The show was part of the documentary series Cutting Edge and was split into two separate parts, one for the boys and one for the girls. It was chaos. While the girls clung on to the appearance of civilization for a little bit longer, the boys went feral pretty much straight away. This is how desperate we are! It doesn't work! By the end of the week, the houses were uninhabitable, battle lines had been drawn, and they were all starving. A similar series, Boys and Girls Alone, followed in 2009, but was heavily criticised by viewers, social services, and healthcare professionals. No one wants to be bullied, and... No one wants to be killed. Number 7. Dogs Might Fly A documentary series about teaching dogs to fly aeroplanes may sound like a weird dream you once had, but this was actually a six-part series broadcast on Sky in the UK. The dogs were recruited from shelters across the country and trained up to man the controls of a complex aircraft. The show's animal psychologist admitted that dogs are not designed for flying, but to be fair, neither are humans. <laughs> Shadow Nails Turn 2 Dog trainer Victoria Stilwell described her ideal candidate as willing to go the extra mile, to problem solve and to investigate how to work something out for themselves, adding, that's the kind of dog you want flying a plane. We could argue that a dog shouldn't be flying a plane at all, but maybe that's just closed-minded. He's wondering what all the fuss is, isn't he? <laughs> 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 Number 6 Spring Break with Grandad. From X on the Beach to Sun, Sex and Suspicious Parents, Brits Behaving Badly Abroad has become a reality TV staple. Spring Break with Grandad adds some senior citizens into the usual mix of scantily clad 20-somethings. Let's smash it! The MTV show was fronted by Gaz Beadle of Geordie Shaw fame, who has the power to send contestants home if they don't party hard enough. It's a big ask when you've got your nan or granddad tagging along, but Gaz at least practices what he preaches. His own granddad is also along for the ride. 
and what a ride it is. The young participants don't seem especially phased by the presence of their elders, and the elders themselves get right into the spirit of the experiment. All of you. Whoa, bit of a curveball, guys. Number five, Darren Brown Apocalypse. Whether or not you buy into Darren Brown's very marketable brand of hypnotism, his social experiments make great TV. If you take him at face value, Brown has manipulated his subjects into believing a whole range of disturbing things. The hypnotist even had a woman convinced that she was looking at her own dead body at the side of the road. No, 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 no. In Apocalypse, a young man is set up to believe that the zombie apocalypse has arrived. He's then put through a series of challenges to test his mettle. His family say he's lazy, so this is Darren's way of teaching him how to be a good citizen. Seems a bit extreme. Oh, Jesus, we're everywhere! <laughs> Number 4. Eurotrash A lot of trash TV ends up that way by accident, but Eurotrash embraced the tackiness as part of its brand. For our next story, we've brought our basket here to the fertile fields of Brittany. The late night magazine show pulled in over 2 million viewers every week throughout the 90s, and they never knew what they were going to get. Bizarre European bands, variety acts and curiosities made up the surrealist content of the show. The continental stars were usually dubbed with regional British accents and there was always plenty of nudity. But it's the mating season for penguins. Well, why do you go and stay with them? The show, presented by Antoine Ducon and Jean-Paul Gaultier, ran for 16 series and is still fondly remembered by many Brits. If we are French, why are we, we presenting, you know, a British program? Number three, Drugs Live. What's the best way to teach kids that doing drugs isn't cool? Persuading Jon Snow to smoke cannabis for the first time, filmed by Channel 4, might actually have been a good start. The familiar snowy-haired news presenter took part in a live trial to test the effects that the drug has on the human brain. After less than half a joint, he admitted to feeling woolly. I feel woolly. I feel slightly separated from myself. He then freaked out when the time came to go into the MRI scanner, so the experiment was unable to continue. It was entertaining, but you had to feel bad for him. Afterwards, Snow wrote that the drug had taken him to the darkest mental place he'd ever been. This robbed me of my persona. Number two. Life Stripped Bear. This Channel 4 documentary, or is it a reality show, is based on the Danish series Stripped. A consenting group of people are literally stripped bare of their possessions, clothes included, for 21 days. The safety of this house, I'm not sure what it's going to be like when I have to leave that front door. They must venture out at least once a day to retrieve one item from the shipping container where everything is stored. The experience is supposed to teach the participants that happiness doesn't depend on material things, but surely it's likely to have the opposite effect. So I have nothing and no one. And isn't it against the law to walk around stark naked in public? The viewers at home like the idea of the experiment, but claim to find the nudity too distracting. Free hands at last. Number 1. Michael Jackson, The Live Seance when Michael Jackson died, the world mourned the passing of the Prince of Pop, and for a while, he was very marketable. Would he thought we were crazy? No, he wouldn't think we're crazy. He'd think, why not? Let's, <laughs> let's take a gamble and see if we can get in touch with the spirit, because we're not here to find out anything of who did this in a legal case, who did what, how he died. We're here to see if we can get in touch with his spirit to see that he's doing okay. What better time to wheel out Most Haunted's Derek Akora and exploit the grief of a few gullible Jacko fans? The seance was broadcast live, lasted an entire hour, and is probably the most bizarre television event in recent memory. Apparently inhabiting the body of Akora, Michael spoke words of peace and love, name-checked Quincy Jones, and mumbled about journalists, all in a thick Scouse accent. This is paramount to me to receive that love. Seems legit. The fans were convinced though, and at least one of them appeared to be on the verge of a nervous breakdown. It was unintentionally hilarious at times, but mostly just in very bad taste. Of love, dance, sound. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo UK and subscribe for more great content.